Yeah, yeah good day viewers. Now, uh, we have a topic for us today called price system. And I'll be looking you on economics as a subject. The topic is price system. Now, it's also called price determin determination. And it is the act of determining price through the interplay of the forces of demand and supply. So, it is not referred to as price system or price determination. Now there are some factors that you should consider in this topic as it were. One of the functions of price system is that it enables government to allocate resources into various sectors of the economy. For there is a price. Now when you have a price, you have an understanding of what you want to do. Another function of price system is that it enables demand. It enables you to know the number of goods you want to buy. It also enables you to know the quantity of goods you want to supply because it has a price. Another function of the price system is that it can enable employers of labels to know the amount they will pay for employing their employee labor and also know the amount, the labor also know the amount they can also tell the employer to pay for their services. Why? Because there's a price. Now having said that, there are certain things that we need to know. Things like this a diagram that has demand and supply. You have supply, supply, I have for demand. You, know, you can call this point where demand equals supply at equilibrium price. So in this case, we are looking at the next line, which is equilibrium price, equilibrium quantity, and equilibrium point, and equilibrium. Now go to the diagram here, demand, supply, D, S, S, D. This point here is called equilibrium point. This point here is called equilibrium price. And this one here is called equilibrium quantity. Alright? Now when you talk about equilibrium price, what is equilibrium price? This the prices of goods you buy or purchase at equilibrium. Then what is equilibrium quantity? The quantity of goods, the place where demand, the point of intersection where demand increase supply. And what is the equilibrium quantity? The quantity of goods that you buy at equilibrium. So they all have their definition. Why the equilibrium price is the price you pay at equilibrium. A equilibrium point is the point where demand equates supply, and the equilibrium quantity is the quantity of goods that you pay or you buy rather at equilibrium. At equilibrium. Having said that, we look at the next one, which is what excess demand. Excess demand. D, S, S, and D. This shaded portion here is called the excess demand. Excess demand. And what is excess demand? It is the difference between the quantity demanded and the quantity supplied. Difference between quantity demanded and quantity supplied. Now, if you are giving 10 naira here, I have what? 200, 400, 800. And you are told to find the excess demand. Find the excess demand as 10 naira. Now, if your excess demand formula, is given as quantity demanded minus quantity supplied. Now what is it at 10 area now? Where is 10 and this 10 area here? What do we have here? This is D. Your quantity demanded QD is what 200. QS is what 800. SS demand is what Q QD, sorry, this one is meant to be QS, QS, QD, so this is QS, this is QS, so your QD minus QS, and that will give us 800 minus 200, and our SS demand is 600 units, SS demand is 600 units, excuse me, now the next line is excess supply, if excess demand is different between quantity demanded and quantity supply, what then is excess supply? 
Excess supply is different between quantity supply and quantity demanded. If you are giving a question like this, demand supply, let's call this 30, 20, 400, 800, 1600. And you are told to find the excess supply at 13 naira. You are told to find the excess supply at 13 naira. Now, your excess supply formula. SS supply formula is QS minus QD. What's the QS? This is the QS. That's QS is 1600 and your QD is what? 400. So your SS supply is QS minus QD. And that's 1600 minus 400. And that will give us what? 16 minus 400. Obviously, that should give us what? 1200 units. That is how you get your excess supply. Alright? Now I want to believe that you can do this, I mean, this is appropriately digested now. The next line of action is talking about equilibrium. There are some times you tell to find the equilibrium quantity and equilibrium price. Now let's look at the question now. Find the equilibrium price and quantity find the given price and quantity if QD is 30 plus 40p 40 P, and your QS is equal to 40 minus 60p you are told to find the given price and what quantity what we do? you recall at equilibrium QD is equal to what? QS at equilibrium. So I will equate this to this. That will be what? 30 plus 40P is equal to 4 minus 60P. Make P, make P when I collect like times, collect like times. That will be 30 minus 40. This guy come here is equal to what? Minus 60P. Go over there, we have what? Minus 40p. 30 minus 40 will give us what? Minus 10. And this minus this will give us what? Minus 100p. Divide both sides by what? Minus 100 over minus 100. This cancel this and this cancel that. What do we have there? Our p will be what? 0.01. That's 10 divided by 100. That's 0 0.01. Now, since we already have the value of P at 0 0.01, we can substitute. Substitute. For P in either equation, either equation, either the QD equation or the QS equation. Let's just use Put your in QD. So that your QD will be what 30 plus 40 into bracket 0 or 0 1. So your QD is equal to 30 plus okay, that will be 40 times 1 over 100. Cancel each other. So what do we have there? That will be 4, 2 can go here, 2, 2 can go here, 5, that will be 5 over 2. And we get it as 5 by 2, or so by 5 by that. I'll be 2 divided by 5. And that will give us 0.4. That will be 0.4. So 30 plus 0.4, that will be 30. Now I decided not to use calculator just for those of us who are um, too mindful of calculator so that you can also see how you can do it without calculator. I decided I. I um, Converted this there, which is 40 times 0 0.01. And 0 0.01 is 1 divided by 100. And you can see what I got provided. 5 times 2 actually went 2 in 4 to 3 in 10, 5. Then 2 divided by 5. 
the way you want to check is to get to be sure what I don't need about it. 2 divided by 5, one plus 4, 5 which is not positive, then you can wait each of my 1 plus 4. That's how I've got it. Alright. So I think I should I deserve a plus for to do next. Alright, so that's how you get it. So if you do the same thing, you should get it that for okay. Now that's by the way, that's how you can get a premium price and a premium. But still on this topic, there are certain things that you need to know about things in this topic. What are those things? Ways of determining price. There are just four ways of determining price. We have ways of determining price. Ways of determining price. We have number one by handling. We have number two by portion. We have number three by tender. And we have number four by price control. Now let's start with handling. What is handling? Handling is when you are pricing. That is the wrong use of English language. But when you are backing, and that's the right way to use. When you are backing, Concerning the product, you want to purchase a product and you negotiate with your buyer seller until the both of you agree on the price. That act whereby you negotiate with your seller through bargaining until you both agree at the price it is by angling, or you can also call it humbling. H U W G L I N G. So, angling is when the buyer negotiates with the seller concerning the price of the commodity until they both agree at the price. You have to determine the price. We are looking at ways of determining price. You have to determine the price. The next line is called auction. What is auction? Auction is when you, you, you take the commodity out and you start what, giving, you give the commodity to the highest bidder. The person who purchases, the, who buys with the highest amount or who requests, based on his own bargaining ability in terms of what, uh, is striking the balance among the other audiences. Is called auction. So auction is when the commodity is displayed to the members of the public and the highest bidder purchases that commodity. It's called auction. He has agreed at the price. Then by tender, this is an application in writing, the either offered by the buyer or the seller stating the amount they are willing to buy or sell the commodity. You have stated your price as a buyer, the seller has also stated his price as a seller. So that application in writing offered by the seller or the buyer stating the amount they are willing to buy the commodity, it's called tender. Then the last one, price control. Of course, this is done by the government. Price control is when the government fixes the prices for certain essential commodities. The commodities must be essential. Either above the equilibrium price or below the equilibrium price, thereby distorting price mechanism. In this case now, if government decides to come and decide to increase the price of the commodity, you have one and it increases it about. Maybe the commodity was 10 naira, uh, government says is 20 naira, uh, that is price control. Or government says is 5 naira, uh, that is price control. So when government fixes the price of certain essential commodities, either above or below the equilibrium price, we refer to that as price control. Now price control is divided into two. We have the maximum price control and we have the minimum, the minimum price control. Now let me start with the maximum price control. What is maximum price control? Maximum price control is when government fixes the price of certain essential commodity below the equivalent price, thereby distorting price mechanism. You know, let's hear somebody say, why below? Because when, when you are hearing maximum, yeah, because you are talking about the maximum amount you are meant to pay. So maximum is referring to the situation when you are not supposed to buy beyond that am am amount. And essentially, government is always there to protect the citizen. Whenever you hear minimum wage, you hear maximum wage. So, uh, uh, in terms of maximum price, government will do it in such a way that you don't pay it's usually below the equivalent price. So price maximum price control is when government fixes the commodity the price of commodity below. And it's otherwise known as when government fixes it for below we have what? Price law which is for the maximum price. Alright. I'll tell you what is otherwise known and let's continue first. So this one is what demand and you have what supply and this is what supply and you have what demand. So maybe I just take note of um, what I said about the maximum price control. That is the as where my government fix uh, the maximum price where government fixes the price of the essential commodity below the minimum price, thereby distorting price. Now the next one is what minimum price control. 
This is when government facing the price of the essential commodity above the equivalent price, thereby distorting price mechanism. So that act whereby government facing the price of the essential commodity above the equivalent price is what we call minimum price control. So when government still minimum wage, minimum wage you don't realize that government has paid the price above the equivalent price and otherwise known as price. So now act whereby government facing the price of certain essential commodity above the equivalent price is called what? Price flow. Now the other one I will tell you was price ceiling. Sign price ceiling is otherwise known as what the, the maximum price control. So please don't uh, omit any of them. Price is called the minimum price control is known as the price floor, and the uh, maximum price control is known as what price ceiling. Do you understand that? So that's the two aspects of what price control. So those are the four ways a real government can determine price. Still on this topic, there are other things that we need to know, take note of, which is effect of a shift in demand and supply curve. Effect of a shift in demand and supply curve on price and quantity. Effect of a shift in demand and supply curve. On price and quantity, effect of a shift in demand and supply curve of price and quantity. Now, what's happening here? We observe in this case that if demand curve shifts to the right, this is to the right. Demand curve can also shift to the left. Supply curve can also shift and uh, shift to the right. That's increasing supply. This is what decrease in what in supply. All right. So it depends on the content. So we are looking at the effect of a shift in demand and supply for on price and quantity. Now, if you are giving a question, for example, and I said, if demand for shift to the right and supply for remains constant, what is the effect on price and quantity? Question says, if demand for Shifts to the right and supply curve remains constant. What is the effect on price and quantity? What is the effect on price and quantity? Very easy analysis. You just first just follow the, the statement. This is your demand for, okay, and this is the supply for. This is the point of intersection, and this is demand and this is supply. They say demand for shifts to the world's right, shifting to the right. What is happening here? This is P zero, and this guy intersects this guy here, and this also intersects it here, and this here over here. All right, this is Q zero. This is P1 and this is Q2. Now what is the effect? What if the map was shift to the right and supply curve remains constant? Or the supply curve is meant to remain constant. So this is the supply curve, it's constant, so one move is not good. So the effect is that the price increases while the quantity also what increases. So both price and quantity, both price and quantity. Both price and quantity increases. Both price and quantity increases. All right, let's take another question. The next question says, if supply curve decreases, curve decreases, and Demand curve remains constant. What is the effect on price and quantity? What do we do in this case? Demand supply. 
he gets it here. They now say the person demands supply, supply demands. His supply curve decreases, decreases, goes backwards. It goes backwards. And they say the map curve remains the same. What it defects. So this is the point of intersection here. P0, Q0. This guy it is, it intersects itself here. I have got P1, and this is called Q0. So what is happening here? There's a decrease in quantity and an increase in price. So there are questions in which you all automatically answers when you interpret it. No examiner or questionnaire will ever tell you the answer, but whenever you see it, you, you put it there down and you get your answer towards whatever you wish to get. So that is how it is done. So there's an increase in the price and also what it increase in the quantity. Alright. I want to believe at this question that you are clear with this. Question.